Now, what's important to notice is that the tip of your navigation wand is at the end of the trocar, which is the length of the tube. It is not at the very tip. So the very tip of your trocar is going to project, was it another 15 uh, millimeters beyond the tip? So one thing you can do is yourself or ask your tech to add a projection 15 millimeters beyond and navigate the projection rather than the actual tip of your navigation. And then I show it as a 13 millimeter cylinder to approximate the diameter uh, on here. So you'll see over here that now we have sort of this pseudo real-time navigation of the very tip of this. Depending on what your target is, you're either going to, as I mentioned earlier, target deep and work your way out, or target superficial and work with your way in. When you're first starting, a general rule of thumb is I would shallow dock for tumors and dock deep within a hematoma. So what happens with hematomas, especially if they're not hyperacute uh, and really thick clot, is as you back the tube out, maintaining intracranial pressure, meaning no mannitol, no hyperventilation, you'll actually get clot delivering itself as you slowly back out. So we have this, this fake target set up. There's not a real lesion within here. Again, we would position the patient. It depends on if you're using an exoscope or a microscope. If you're using a microscope, the positioning is going to be the same as you would do for any open case, which is that the, the trajectory that you're taking, the long axis of your approach, is approximated by a line from your eyes to your hands, right? And your scope's going to be sitting there and you're going to be looking line of sight. If you're using an exoscope, whether it's the synaptive system or the stort system, you're going to position your patient a little bit differently. You want to position them in a way that the trocar, once it's locked in place, is straight up and down. And the reason for that is if you position the patient like you normally would, you end up with your trocar at an angle, which is very comfortable and intuitive because it's line of sight, but then you have an exoscope up in your grill, so to speak, sitting in your way. So you want to adjust maybe by about a 20 degree angle so that it's straight up and down and your exoscope straight up and down, and then you can work comfortably. The other thing to do is, you know, this is just because of the lab setup, I would actually have the endoscope view over there, and oftentimes what we'll do in the operating room is we'll turn the bed by 20 degrees uh, off angle so that we're kind of looking this way as we're working, and this isn't in your way. So, Going back to what, you know, we've positioned, going back to the navigation, um, most systems will have a guidance view. This is similar to what you would use for a needle biopsy, and that allows you to not only align your position, um, but also align your angle, right? So you get the bomb hairs, and now you have a trajectory from your entry point. Again, when you're planning, uh, you want to plan for a sulcal entry. A lot of time for the larger sulci, you'll be able to see that on the planning station. For a younger patient, you may not be able to. One clue is to look for a cortical vein. The veins tend to run right along the edge of a sulcus. They don't course directly over a gyrus. The other thing you can do is get close enough to where you want to enter and your trajectory. And then once you get the bone open, reset your entry point to be right in the sulcus. So we're going to create a two and a half to three millimeter craniotomy. And then we're going to open the dura in a cruciate fashion. And we're going to only open it about 15 millimeters, basically the diameter of the tube. And that way, nothing is herniating out around the tube while you're in there. And you're maintaining um, your intracranial pressure. When you're picking a uh, tube length, they come in set sizes, 40, 60, 75. Uh, and you can get some smaller ones and larger ones, but those are pretty standard. Pick a little bit longer, so round up rather than round down. And the reason for that is that once you're docked, you don't want to be hubbed. Because if you're hubbed and not floating, then you can't angle. You're hitting your bone edge or you're hitting your dural edge. So if you need to pick a longer tube, 
such that it's sticking out a little bit, that's okay because that gives you the freedom to move around. And that's what allows you to access a much larger lesion deep through a smaller hole superficially. Um, so you've got your wand docked in your trocar, you've got a projection on it. Um, there is, with this set, uh, the so-called shepherd's crook or gimbal, and this locks on to the disposable portion or clear portion of the tube right at the base here, okay? And this is designed to then dock into either a Greenberg retractor or you can use it with a metrics arm, some sort of flexible arm. And the idea here is that instead of having this fixed, this actually allows it to rotate, so it's rotating a little bit free. There is a little bit of give here. It's not a perfect lock. And so this is semi-floating, all right, as opposed to a truly fixed tubular retractor, which makes it a little bit easier, moves with the brain during syncope and that sort of thing. Um, typically what I'll do is, ha it's e much easier to lock this on ahead of time and then as you're holding it, have an assistant lock it in, then have it sitting on the end of retractor and try to fiddle around with it. Um, so you're gonna introduce this and you're gonna follow your guidance down to target. And again, you're just opening the leptomeninges. You don't need to explore the sulcus deeply. Uh, and then you're gonna access it. So, you know, here we are, we've got a good trajectory. And if you have your entry and your target set, most systems will give you a depth to target. Um, and then once you do that, you can slowly remove. And this locks in and then you start working. Um, let's switch over to the synaptive system so you can see a little bit what that looks like. So again, we have a fake target um, earlier on in the steps here, you would have um, been able to plan and draw out your tracks, and the system doesn't plan tracks the way that you might be used to. So on most systems, when you're planning tractography, uh, what you do is you seed somewhere, right? You seed an origin, you seed a destination, and it follows one track. Uh, this does real-time um, basically maps out all the tracks in the brain and you can then call them back based on how dense they are and whether or not they're intersecting. Um, the, another difference with this system is that you have a tracker that attaches directly to the tube. So the difference is, is that, you know, with the standard system, once you're at target, you lose navigation. With this, you take the trocar out, you're still tracking your tube both in terms of position and angle, roll, pitch, and yaw at all times, all right? Other than that, it's basically the same. Um, one other feature that's available here is that you can project, uh, the, it'll project what size trocar you need, what length trocar you need. You can also project how much uh, play you'll get based on the size of your craniotomy. So depending on the size of the lesion, you, it'll sort of map out what you need in terms of how small or large your craniotomy needs to be uh, in order to be able to roll your tube enough to get to the edge of the lesion. And after that, um, Matt, are we set up for live tracking? Yeah. Okay. So... I'm just going to rotate your... Uh... So you can see here up in the upper left that we're getting live tracks being drawn. We've culled out, so you're only getting major ones. So you see callosum and pyramidal tracks. It's a little confusing. This orientation, we're actually upside down a little bit. Um, so those green ones uh, are running front back. And, and that is, that's going to be your ILF probably. Um, and you can see on the more standard views over here, uh, you can see SLF fibers, the blue are the pyramidal or corticospinal tracks coming down. Um, and you can also have this software tell you whether or not you are uh, intersecting at a perpendicular angle to one of these major tracks, so it'll warn you. Once, once we're docked, again, trocar comes out, we can still navigate, okay? And then, let's see. Yeah, so get this closer.
Okay. And you can adjust this. Sometimes it's off a little bit, and you can reset to what a line to port should be. Okay. And then here, where is focus? Okay. There we go. And so now we're focused at the depth. And if I move, I can have the robot follow me. And if I really want to, I can just kind of keep moving. It doesn't move fully in real time, only when I'm tapping, just so you don't get too nauseous. Um, and then at this point, this is where I'd use something, you know, single shaft instruments, a Nico Myriad is nice, suction is nice. Um, you can get a bipolar down this, but it's a little painful. Sometimes I'll pull out metrics trays to have a couple of extra instruments. I'll also pull out my endoscopic endonasal trays, so I have a lot of single shaft instruments. Ring curettes are nice for this sort of thing, especially when you're working on a tumor. So that's it. It's easy, right? <laughs>